In this video, we're going to talk about the drivers of exponential growth, about the drivers of exponential technologies. One of the main drivers of exponential technologies is Moore's Law, named for Gordon Moore, one of the founders of the Intel Corporation, which makes processors. And so Moore's Law applies to processors. Now Moore's Law is this. It's an observation that over the history of computing hardware, the number of transistors on a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. In other words, the processors that are in our computers get twice as good every two years. Okay, and you'll also note there that it says that we should not consider this to be a uh, physical or natural law. It's not like gravity, it's just really more of an observation, even though it's referred to as Moore's Law. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the power of exponentials. So if you go out and you take 30 linear steps, where each step is of the same distance as the one before it, you'll go about 30 meters or 30 yards. But if you take 30 exponential steps, you'll find that at some point you are traversing great distances. In fact, that last step will be about 13 times around the Earth. Okay, so we have this exponential growth curve. So as microprocessors were starting out, that first doubling really didn't seem like much. Okay, and the next doubling didn't seem like much, but it accumulated over years. And when you're starting uh, now in the uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, it's going to be remarkable how fast things are going to get. Now, will this last forever? Probably not. Okay, in fact, Moore's Law is starting to slow down. Um, there have been various predictions about when Moore's Law will end. And we're kind of getting into that time period right now. Uh, even Gordon Moore has said that Moore's Law is going to end. Uh, why is that? Well, it's a couple of different reasons. Um, a lot of them are technical, having to do with the physical properties of electrons and jumping between one circuit and another. Um, but it's most people are pretty sure that we're going to start to see the slowdown in how fast microprocessors are getting. Now, there are some far out ways to extend Moore's Law that are on the horizon that people are thinking of. Quantum computing is one, so we're using quantum states instead of just a one or a zero. A bit could exist in many different states. Molecular computing, actually using DNA to store information, and this has actually been done where a small uh, animated uh, video was stored uh, in DNA and then read back, uh, and 3D ch chip design. So thinking about um, the heat and the other things that have to be considered in chip design, but thinking about it more in three dimensions. All of these have been tried to some degree, but they're really not in production yet and won't be in production anytime soon. However, I firmly believe that technology will continue its exponential growth, at least for a little while, regardless of what happens to Moore's Law. There's a number of reasons for that. One is this idea of FPGAs, where we can actually have chips that can be programmed once they're out in the field, so we can kind of build that raw intelligence into the chips, and we can then program them to do different things once they're out there. Uh, I saw a cam camera manufacturer last week that was doing just this. Another reason is because of cloud computing, and cloud computing is extremely powerful uh, because cloud computing allows us to access sometimes many different servers, the powers of, of those servers combined together uh, to deliver um, services and resources to us. So cloud computing is the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage, and process data rather than a local server or personal computer. Now, this is much more powerful than just storing your files out in the cloud somewhere. Um, think of it as processing power as a utility. It's not just about storage. 
Okay, it's amazingly powerful. If we had a great idea for a new app or a new website today, we could get out our credit card and we could spin up some servers today using Microsoft's cloud services. We could use Amazon's cloud services, Google's. Uh, we could uh, do that within a matter of minutes, okay? So it's an extremely powerful for business. Think of it as processing power as a utility. Um, these platforms that are out in the cloud really hide a lot of the complexity and details about the underlying infrastructure, so we don't have to know all that stuff, okay? So it's a very agile uh, architecture as well. So uh, cloud computing, as far as business goes, dramatically lowers the barriers to entry. Once again, make sure you're thinking about cloud computing as a utility. So those are some of the main drivers of exponential growth. Uh, you will find other types of processors. For example, the CCDs in our cameras tend to double uh, at a certain rate as well. Theirs is a, a little bit less than every two years. Uh, but these are what um, have been driving this exponential growth, have been driving this disruption to various industries, and will continue to do so for quite some time. You can go on to the next video where we'll talk about the Gardner hype cycle, or uh, you can, of course, subscribe to this channel if you'd like more interesting stuff like this.